Hey there, everybody. Here we are. We're back on the beach. Things have changed a lot since the last time we were here. The winds have been pushing to the north. It's been real strong. So there's only a few piles for us to pick today. However, I'm not going to miss this opportunity. It's hard to believe 72 hours ago, I was sitting on that rock with my kids. We were having the time of our life. My backpack, all of our shoes were on it. Now it's underwater. We were playing in the sand right over here. You can see it's nothing but bedrock. There's beautiful sedimentary fossils, 300 million years old. Look at this right over here. It looks like it's a dinosaur bone, but I know that these are all fossils from the Carboniferous era forests. Kind of noticed from up top that the piles are going to get better the farther we go. There's going to be more tinier rocks as you can see over here. These rocks right over here are a little bit too big. I'm not going to be able to move them. Check this one out right over here, everybody. Looks like it's perfectly aged. It's true that some of these gray pieces of sea glass do originate from old battery jars, like wet batteries. However, you know, the ones that I've seen over time... Oh, here, there's another piece right over here. I do have to say, though, that the battery jars that I've seen over time, the glass ones, the glass doesn't seem to be as thick as these ones over here, especially when I get to the real thick ones. So that's kind of where I figure that they are from floor model TVs that varied over the years. When I find a piece of gray sea glass and it's not as dark as this one and it's got a little bit of a thinner profile, those are the ones that I kind of attribute to being from battery jars. Coming up on the next pile here, everybody. You can see there's these big intermittent piles of sand in between them. So hopefully you can see the rocks are a lot smaller over here. So hopefully I have a bit more luck. Oh yeah, right away I can see we're gonna have some more luck over here, guys. Check this out, there's a piece of cobalt blue. You can see that it's completely crizzled over here. I don't know if this is a piece of bonfire or if this is a manufacturing flaw, but this is a really neat little find over here. It's kind of ugly looking, but it's really hard to say a piece of cobalt blue is ugly looking. And then right over here, this pile is definitely picking up. Okay, looking around, moving them. Oh my goodness, I'm looking through the viewfinder and I'm not even seeing what's in front of me right over here. Guys, look at this, everybody. This one here is a really strange looking lip. Okay, let me tell you about this lip now that I look at it right away. This over here is what's known as an applied blob top. This is from a really old, early bottle. You know, something like this would be 1860 to 1880. you can see how super frosty it is and then right over here it hit a stress and I'll bet it was this rock right over here why did you have to break this piece of rock oh look right over here guys there's a heart rock I'm gonna get to that in a sec but what I wanted, what I wanted to say about this piece before I pick up that heart rock is this is the top of like old torpedo style bottles Look at this right over here. Here, guys. Hold on. Here, check this one out. Here, guys. Check this one out right over here. You can see it. It's the tiniest little piece of a pottery shard. And it might actually be from, like, the willow pattern. It's really hard to tell. And it's hard to get it in focus. It's wild because it was actually stuck to that rock. And I just started digging, like, a few minutes ago. Actually, the timer says it's 44 seconds. So I haven't been digging for more than 44 seconds. Nice little piece right here. I guess you can tell it's real windy out, everybody. All of the good rocks are right here, everybody. But the problem is, is I'm going to have to move this top layer. It's going to take me a long time to get the little stuff off and some of the big stuff, which is kind of wild. You can see it's got like a mix of these tiny little pebbles and big rocks as well. It's the tiny pebbles that have the sea glass, and that's what we're looking for. Like that right here. There's a dad with a daughter on the beach, so I am just going to film holding the camera now, okay? Just for a minute. We're going to see what I see. Although I have to say, there's a few reasons why I really enjoy to put the camera down. Number one is that it gives me two hands, because I've described myself, if you haven't seen my early videos, as a human dredge. So I really like to get through and get all of these rocks moved. I move a lot of material to find a lot of my rare stuff. I don't want to hold and holler. You can see I've dug a dredge right over here. Still, and they're right next to me. But check this 
out. It's a marble and it's sitting right over here. Woo hoo. Okay, it's a four vein cat's eye and it's pretty big. I've got a few other finds that I'm gonna share with you guys right now. I've got some in my hand and I've got some in the bag. So right now I'm gonna put this in the bag where it's safe and I'm gonna share these with you. Okay, so I found a few nice gray nuggets right away in the past few minutes. And I wanted to do a shout out to the amazing and beautiful rocks on my beach. So in the past couple of seconds, I just started to collect these beautiful rocks because I know a lot of people out there love rocks. And I promise you, I come down here quite often and I look for little pieces of rocks like this for my mosaics and my artwork. However, I don't think people just want to watch me picking rocks. So this is why I kind of show the sea glass action. I found a few nice pieces of aqua sea foam as well. You can see this one over here. It's got some beautiful bubbles in it. It's got a little bit of an inclusion. So this one here is a piece of bonfire. And then right down here, I've got this piece and it's a super nice little triangle. It's really soft. It's lighter than cornflower blue. So I don't know if we could call this a powder blue, but it's a beautiful powder blue triangle. So you can see over here, it's got a little bit of a pattern or ridging. So this is probably from like a smaller medicine bottle. And then over here, I dug this pottery shard out. And this one here looks really porous on this side. So this is an 18th century find without a doubt. And now thirdly, I saw this, and I don't think it's a marble, but I just wanted to take my camera out just in case. And I still don't even know. I think that this absolutely is just like a regular rock. But I'm gonna bring it home just in case. I see one more little piece right over here. So here we go. So there's four little finds and I'm still trying to be quiet and try to stay humble here, everyone. Look at this mystery item over here, guys. It's probably gonna be plastic because it's in the high tide mark. Oh, uh, look at this. I think it's like a red fox. No, it's not a fox, it's a collie. Check it out, everybody. It's a statue of a collie. It's definitely made out of plastic. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this isn't a collie. Okay, everybody, you tell me what this is. What do you think this is? Do you think this is a fox? Do you think this is a collie? Or am I way off? Is this some sort of a different animal that I'm not even considering right now? Either way, it's coming home with me to my collection of oddities. It took me a little bit of time to get the camera set up, everybody, because the winds are pushing and I'm kind of on an angle right now. There's only this one little place to dig and I'm in the trench. So I'm gonna keep digging here. I'm gonna start close and I'm gonna end all the way back there and we're gonna find some sea glass. We're gonna put it in the bag and hopefully we find something good. Okay, perfectly aged. There's a lot of good stuff here. It's getting hard to see though. It's getting hard to see with my hair, everybody. It's getting up to 600 days since I had a haircut. It might be time soon. I see something. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys, look what I just found right over here. It's the bottom of an old apothecary stopper. It's almost got this perfect cylindrical shape to it, and it's got these tiny little air bubbles in it as well. I'm gonna see if I can catch them. You can see there's little air bubbles, yeah, right over there. So this piece, it wasn't shaped like this by the ocean, although it has reduced in size. I can tell that this is a piece of a stem from an apothecary stopper because a lot of times the stems break off from the crown, the round part, and then even sometimes you can find just a tiny little fragment. This one's aqua sea foam, so we know it's gonna be a little bit older, a little bit earlier. This one's from the 1800s. Oh yeah, it's a marble. It's a marble, guys, check it out. Yeah, it just started to rain like a few seconds ago and then this marble just fell right out of the sky. It's really different than the last one that we found where you could see that the veins of the cat's eyes, those little streaks were very consistent. And this one over here, it has three different colors. It's got the green, it's got the yellow, it's got the white but they're very inconsistent. They're not evenly poured. You know, I'm happy I found this marble. It was kind of hard before because I saw that red one and it was almost like I was like hiding and I had to be really quiet. I was like, shh, 
I found a marble, everybody. You know what? Those people, they actually turned out that they were fans of my channel and they're locals, which is wild because I don't see too many locals down here. So I want to let you know that if you see me on the beach, feel free to say hi. I'm a really friendly guy and I just love to share the experience of beachcombing and I love to share my knowledge. So if you see me, don't be shy, everybody. Make sure you say hi, share a smile with me. And I'm not afraid. I always love to see what people find. So if you've got something neat and you want to share it with me, go ahead and show it to me. I'd be happy to see it. So this one here, it's about seven millimeters. And now I can go, yes, woo. I'm so happy that I got this one. That makes two, because I'll tell you guys, now that it's starting to rain, I've got this pile. Some of these rocks are getting a little bit harder to move, but we're gonna keep going here. It's unreal. It's right where I put the camera and this beautiful piece sitting right over here that would make a nice small pendant or earring was sitting right next to it and I just didn't see it because I'm too busy focusing on what's in front of me right over here, like these pieces of melt glass. You can see there's a nice little melt glass right over here that I just dropped. I wanna thank everybody out there who answered my holy grail question. There was a lot of really neat answers out there. You know, I have to say the most unique one was somebody said a beautiful piece of security glass because that one was definitely out of left field. And it just goes to show that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So different people have different preferences. You know, I gave the question a lot of long, hard thought after reading all the answers as to what my holy grail piece would be. And at first I was thinking orange. And then I remembered that on the back of my book, I have a beautiful piece of carnival glass and it's the only piece of carnival glass that's well-aged sea glass that I've ever, ever owned. So for me, my holy grail find would be a nice another piece of blue glass that has the carnival kind of iridescence to it, you know, that oily kind of a look. So yesterday it was way too stormy for me to come down and then I was walking through the harbor and I uncovered a couple of neat bottles that I want to share with you right now. Okay, everyone, the tide's gone down over half a foot and now there is not one, but there is two bottles sitting right over here in the sediment that we are going to get to look at. They look like they're 20th century, but we really never know, especially after that poison bottle find that I just found. So let's take a look here. Oh, it says something on the bottom, guys. What does it say? It says vitals, vitalis. Does it say vitalis? Holy cow, guys. Yeah, it says vitalis right over here. We can see that it says vitalis, vitalis on both different sides. And here it says vitalis as well. And it's pretty full. Oh, look at that. It's got a little top that you'd kind of see in a Worcestershire, kind of like a, you'd see this in kind of like a condiment. And I've even seen this in an Avon bottle that we just picked up. So this one here actually could be a little bit older. And then let's take a look over here now and see what this one is. Uh, it's got a screw cap on it. It could just be a regular beer bottle now that I look at it. Oh, that's too bad. So this one here is a modern beer bottle, which is kind of funny. But if you look right over here, it's got that iridescence to it. Over time, the glass becomes sick due to the exposure of an imbalance in the pH levels. And you can see this effect kind of like a carnival glass effect. And it's really just amazing that I found this bottle, which is probably close to 100 years old, maybe 80 years at its minimum. And then we found this one right over here. It's got the anti-slip embossing. It's very modern. However, it's been sitting in the ground for a while because it's got this beautiful patina to it. Okay, everyone, so I just had a chance to wash off the Vitalis bottle and give this one a little bit of a rinse. But as you can see, I got all of the sediment out, which proved a little bit difficult because it's got such a narrow little opening over here. And then after I got home, I did a little bit of research and to find out that that is a bottle of old hair tonic. It's probably from about the 1930s, judging by the bottle shape. I wanna share the advertisements with you as well from the 1930s to 1950s that I saw when I was doing the research on this bottle. And it's really just neat to see how advertisers were appealing to people back then. Whenever you see a bottle out there and it's got this iridescence on it, I want this to kind of be a reminder that it's not necessarily an indication of age, this little beautiful patina. guys look at this right over here it looks like it's the top from an old lighthouse okay everybody this one is really hard for me to get in the camera but you can see it's the top 
from an old teapot. It's got the little tip right over here. So like I said, it kind of looks like it's the top of an old lighthouse and it's a really neat find. The pile of rocks are getting a little bit too big here. So I've been using a rock myself to move them to try and save my hand. There's still lots of sea glass in it. So hopefully we're gonna make a few good scores here before I move on. But I can definitely see that the tide has gone down considerably and there's gonna be some piles down there to pick. So we're gonna to have to go pick those piles, abandon this and probably come back to it later on. There's at least six or eight feet you can see right over here that I haven't been able to dig yet. And there's sea glass all over it. So we're gonna take a little peek here. I'm glad we got up. Keep going, we're gonna see what we find. Hi, <laughs> look at this right over here, guys. Right over here, look at this crazy marble. You've got to be kidding me. I've never seen a marble like this before. Here, I got to get the camera in focus. Look at the banding on this right over here. It almost looks like it's a planet. It almost looks like it's a mineral. It's absolutely beautiful. It's banded. It's got these streaks on it. You know, I find green cat's eyes and I find green solid marbles, but this one here is an absolute first for me in 13 seasons of picking this spot. That is just crazy. I cannot believe that marble was sitting here. And it's wild because you can I can see the footprints right over here from the father and the daughter that were on the beach, but the tide had not receded enough. And it just goes to show that you really got to pick on the tide charts. And if you don't pick on the tide charts, you're not really maximizing your potential. Like I said, once again, there's a footprint right over here. And that marble was sitting right on the surface. Oh, yeah! Guys, it's a piece of yellow! Yeah! <laughs> Look at this, guys, look at this crazy piece of yellow over there at the low tide mark. This one here is just nuts. Okay, let's take a look at it. It is just riddled with air bubbles. Okay, let me hold this up so everybody can see right over here. So you can see it's got these air bubbles in it. And you know what? I don't think this is like from a lighthouse lens, something like that, because the one that I find pieces like that, they don't have these little air bubbles in it. So this is probably from something different than the pieces that I attribute to being old lighthouse lenses. It's also not as thick now that I'm looking at it too. Usually when I find a piece of yellow on this beach, it's super thick, you know, it's about this thick, like this right over here. This one is a lot thinner. So I don't wanna say that it's not from an old lens covering, but I don't think this is from a lighthouse lens covering because it's way too thin and it's got all these little air bubbles in it too. Nice little green, it's aged to perfection. You can tell it's a good pile. <laughs> Look at this, guys. Look at this crazy piece right over here. It is a piece of a bonfire marble. Okay, sorry guys, this is not a bonfire marble, but this is a fragment of a marble. You can see it's got a little piece of it that's only remaining. The rest of it's probably still out there in the ocean or who knows, it's in this pile. <laughs> Looking at it now, it's almost like it's like an orange wedge. You can see it's a little triangle on the top and then it's really rounded on the bottom. So that means that there's probably seven other slices of this marble if it broke off perfectly into eight little wedges. And maybe one day I'm gonna be able to find another wedge to it. Who knows, maybe I already have because I find so many different fragments of marbles. Anytime you find a little fragment of a marble, it's a special occasion. So I don't care that this one is broken and it's beat up. It's still got a home in my collection. Nice green, nice size green right over here. Oh, look at that, aqua, beautiful aqua blue right over here. It's very small everybody, but you can see it. It's got a really nice color to it, this beautiful aqua blue. 
this pile right in front of the camera once again awesome electrical wire this pile right in front of the camera again is really paying really paying out some good finds so far Nice, another perfectly aged piece. And then we've got another one right over here. Brown. Oh, look at this one, it's lavender. This one is off the charts compared to all these other finds that I was just finding right over here. Can you see it, everybody? It's a beautiful piece of purple. It's a nice little piece of purple. I wouldn't say it's really dark purple, so it's like a lavender purple, but it's aged to perfection. It's an absolute 10. You can see it, it's got no chips to it. It's got this huge C mark in it, a whole bunch of frostiness to it. It's really thin. Okay guys, it's the absolute lowest point of the tide today. So I'm gonna walk the low tide mark and I'm gonna see, cause you've just saw by the last video that I'm finding a few things down here. So I'm gonna pick this up and we're gonna go back into the first person point of view. We're gonna see if there's anything else sitting in these piles that I can see right in front of me. Okay, this one's really tiny. Let's go through the low tide mark. Oh, look right over here, there's an amber brown. Is that glass right over there? Hold on. Yeah, guys, this is glass right over here. Okay, look at this, everybody. This is a piece of flash glass. You can see it's got a little bit of a reddish orange tinge to it, and it's got this melt glass on the outside. So this is a process where an extra layer of molten glass is added to the vessel. Right over here, there's another piece, and then right over here, there's another aged piece. But let's get back to this piece of flash glass because it's very, very unique. If you can see it right over there, it's a tiny, thin little layer. So they're only just using a little bit of like red glass and it gives it a really unique accent to it. You can see there's the big hole that I dug in my backpack and I'm all the way down here. But when I got here, the water was going right to the top where I was. And I don't know if you can tell by that sound, but that means that it's just starting to creep up behind me. So I'm gonna do less talking and I'm gonna do some more digging here. Look at this, everybody. It's another beautifully well-aged piece of gray sea glass. Check this out. I think I see another piece of flash glass over here. Look at this. It's got a little bit of cobalt blue on it, and it's almost exclusively all clear. So this is another form of flash glass. guys it's a piece of green but it's not the most common piece of green so normally when i find a piece of kelly green there's really not much to write home about it's a common 20th century find and while it is true about this find right over here i have recovered a couple of really unique bottles that have this waffle pattern in it Maybe because it's getting a little bit cold, I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna share a few of my favorite bottles with you that originated with this waffle pattern because it's something that you might encounter or already have encountered on your beaches when you're beach combing. And you might've always wondered, what makes a waffle pattern like this? Well, I'm gonna be really happy to share with you a few of these original examples when we go home. Oh, yeah, guys. Yeah. It's another one. It's another marvel. Woohoo. Okay, guys. Check this one out over here. It's a red, white, and blue cat's eye sea marble. You can see it's a little different than a lot of the marbles that I recover out my way. Ugh, look at my hands. They're just so dirty. I got seaweed. I got rocks all over them. But that's my life. That's how I live, isn't it? So here we go, guys. It's a red, white, and blue cat's eye sea marble it's still pretty big you know i'd say it's about a half an inch big and it's got a little bit of an aqua sea foam tinge to it okay everybody i am just doing a little bit of kicking before we leave and check this out right over here it's an absolutely massive piece it almost looks like it's a heart 
It's about two inches across. It's a really massive find. I came back to this big pile that we were digging a few hours ago, and I'm just giving it a few kicks from the top. I'm not getting on my knees. I'll be honest, everybody, the weather has gotten really cold. My feet are a little bit wet. It's a lot harder to keep picking when you're wet and you're cold and you're cranky. But I'm giving this everything I can. And of course, I find something big like that when I turn the camera off. So let's keep going here and maybe I'm going to find one more. See, here's another nice big piece right over here. Nice, large, clear. Another one that's well over an inch. And it's usually, like I say, when you dig in the big rocks, in the big piles, you're going to find the bigger pieces of sea glass. And when you dig in the smaller stuff, you find a lot more of the tinier wow factor pieces. Let's put this piece next to the other yellow that I found and see how different they look. You can really see the difference in the color from one to the other. Although this one still looks like it's a little bit yellow. This new smaller one that I found still definitely looks yellow. It is a lot thinner and a lot flatter in contrast to this big thick yellow one. It's amazing to think how thick the other yellow one that I found last year was in contrast to this one, even though this one seems super thick. It really is unbelievable when this beach turns over how much gray sea glass there is. Okay, everybody, I just kicked up another marble. You can see it's a milk glass marble right over here. And I don't know, let's see, does it have a swirl to it? No, it's really hard to get it in focus. It doesn't have a swirl, but it has a little bit of a dent to it. That's okay though, guys, this is my fifth marble of the day. And every single kick I make, I'm just saying to myself, this is the last kick and I'm going home. I'm glad I stayed because I got another one. Okay, everybody, you can see the pile behind me. And I'll tell you that I have ripped this beach up as much as I can. There's not going to be any more sea glass to be found. We've been here for the whole afternoon and it's into the evening now. So it's going to be time to go home. I really want to thank everybody for watching. Thanks for all of your love and your positive support. I just want to remind you, if you leave a comment, you leave a question, I'm going to go out of my way to answer it and it's going to make me feel so good. I just love to connect with people. I love to share and it's so neat how a love for beachcombing treasures brings kind-hearted people together from across the globe and I'm very blessed to be sharing these videos with everybody who's watching. So thank you so much everybody for watching. Hopefully we're back out here again real soon. I'll see you then. So I've got that tiny little nubbin right over here that I say is from an old apothecary stem and I wanted to put it next to an original one right over here. So you can see they've still got that cylindrical type of a, a shape to them and this one's reduced in size quite a bit. Now a lot of times the stem breaks off from the crown which is the top over here and I love this piece because it's a perfect example you can see it came out of landfill it didn't even go into the ocean yet somehow the stem it sheared right off and it took a little portion of the crown with it and then finally I've got these other examples of the stems that have broken off from the crowns in my collection you can see that all of these little stems over here all have the same cylindrical shape to them. They come in a variety of colors, although out my way I find the majority of the ones that I find are in the aqua seafoam blue over here, which kind of indicates they were made in the late 19th, early 20th century. This little piece over here with the milk glass, the clear, and then the orangish red in the middle, it was quite intriguing to me. So I really wanted to share with you the closest thing that I have at home that matches to it. So this vase right over here, I pulled it out of heavy pickup probably about 12 years ago. And I really am not sure if this is like a handmade work of art or something that maybe was sold in a dollar store to look like it's a handmade work of art. Just because it's got like this style of glass to it where they're just using this little bit of red in the middle because we can can see that the milk glass is on the inside just like our piece and then the clear glass is on the outside like right over here and then in the middle we've got this orange just kind of a red transition the sunburst of a color that makes it so much more beautiful and ornate and then even looking at the top over here I thought to myself is there a chance that there's just a machine and it folds this as the glass is molten and hot and still malleable? Or is there an artist that's actually doing this and making this a one of a kind, very unique piece? So if anybody out there has ever seen this like in a dollar store or even like in an art collection, I'd really love to hear from you. So now I have my waffle pattern over here and I've got my two favorite vessels in two different colors that possess this waffle pattern. Now I love this one over here because obviously this is a liquor bottle, it's an alcohol bottle, but it's got the unique handle and it's almost shaped like a boat. 
Now, if you recognize this vase right over here, that's because normally it sits right behind me on the shelf up atop where I keep a few of my old lanterns and larger pieces that just don't fit inside my glass cabinet in the other room. I also want to add that the waffle pattern just wasn't used to make ornate glass vessels, that it was used in a ton of crystal and tableware and glassware as well. You can find it in a whole different style of colors, and if you don't know how to tell the difference between crystal and glass, you put the two of them together and you'll see that the crystal actually is a little bit duller because of the lead content. I made a video on this not too long ago, so feel free to check it out if you're looking for more insight on how to tell between glass and lead crystal. So I've got this little yellow piece right over here, and I wanted to put it next to the big one that I found last year, which I'm almost positive comes from an old lighthouse lens. Now when I put the two of them together, the thickness is a little bit more apparent, and you can see the size difference as well. This possibly could have been to do with something from the rail or even a nautical lantern that wasn't from a lighthouse lens like this one over here. And I say that because looking at it, this corner right over here is really rounded. So that leads me to believe that this actually was a rounded lens at one point.